quite a straightforward example here, Bagora's Sol. We have the paper name, Influence of Osmotic and Caloric Loads Upon Lateral Hypothalamic Self Simulation. We have the quotation marks, so that means it's an article. It's inside the journal, Journal of Comparative and Psychological Psychology. We have the volume number and the number. We're using commas here. We have the year, 1968, and we have the page number, CT, uh, 325 to 332. So it's actually looking pretty good, isn't it? You can see the problem, though, is in the capitalization of the article name and also the capitalization of the journal name. This is following the APA style, but we want the MLA style, which is quite different, which is going to use the source capitalization, such as this here. So we can see that's a key point. Now, I just want to remind you, capitalization is quite difficult. You cannot really guess at it. I did go over some rule of thumb that we can use the first, the first word, the last word, words that are after the colon, and then nouns and pronouns. But you know, that's very hit and miss even. You really need to go back and look at the source and see how did they capitalize it. That's the best way. So once again, we end up with this situation of we need to have the source material and not just guess. Guessing is the worst thing we can possibly do. Here we have another example. Raba, Joseph, and Grant. Theophry, Black is Beautiful, a re-examination of racial preferences and identification inside the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. And we have a volume number, an issue number, a year, and the page numbers. Well, here we've got some problems we can see very clearly, isn't it? The very first problem, of course, is our name for the second author. We have the name with a comma in between, which means the surname and the given name, the first name and the last name, are reversed. But in MLA, we do not do that. For the first author, you reverse, but for the second author, you do not reverse. Very important. And we also can see that we are missing our he, he, period there for the pages, from what page to what page. And in MLA, you do need to have that. So that's pretty straightforward. Just don't confuse this with other style approaches, such as APA. Peterson, Stephen, E, et al. So what does that all mean? We must have three or more authors. So we're going to head, go ahead and use the et al. What is the name of the paper? Positron Emission tomog tomog Tomographic. Ooh. Studies of the Cortical Anatomy of Single Word Processing. It's in the journal Nature. This is the volume number. And here we have the volume number 331.60. I think .60 would be the issue number. And we have the date and the pages. Now, the problem here is inside the MLA, we're very clear. Volume number is one number. Issue number is another number, so that 60 needs to be separated out and put into the NO number. That for Holy M and Fiona M. McPherson. So first name, middle name, last name. Remember the second author is just written out normally. You don't reverse it. 86, preparedness in the severity and outcome of clinical phobia. So that is the name of the article. And you can see that inside this article they have single quotation marks. That's okay. So that's all inside of double quotation marks. So the double quotation marks is telling us that this is an article that's inside of a journal. Something smaller inside of a container that's larger. What is the journal's name? Behavior Research and Therapy. Looking good. Volume numbers here. Number issue numbers here. Our data is here. PP for pages. 221 to 222. That's looking good. So that's all excellent. And then we come down 
here and what do we have? We can see that clearly this mistake was wrong. The date, right? We already had the date down at the bottom. We don't need to have it at the top. In fact, this top one is kind of the APA style, not the MLA style. So we need to be careful about that. Platsky Roberta L. Human Memory Structures and Processes, Second Edition, W. H. Freeman, 1980. So here we have the author, and we have the name of a book, and we've also specified the edition. However, inside MLA, we do need to be careful about that second edition. In MLA, we're allowed to write ND for second and ED for edition. It's a little bit of a problem, I think. In the MLA, there are a few of these abbreviations where you make the word shorter. And there's really no way to know unless you have the MLA guidelines right next to you. So, yeah, something you just need to watch out for and follow the rules. Watch some, see some examples. Yamamoto T at all, so we must have two, we must have three or more authors. And this is inside something larger, so we have the quotation mark, Central Processing of Taste Perception. It's inside the journal called Brain, Mechanisms of Sensation. Oh no, it's inside of a book, I see. This is a book, Brain, Mechanisms of Sensation, and this book has editors. And this came out in 1981, and these are the pages of the chapter we're citing. But the actual correct way to write that is edited by. So MLA is very clear on this. It wants you to write edited by, not just edited. Squire, Larry R. and Neil J. Cohn. So once again, we've got the first author, the second author. I like this little example, very neat. We use the A and D, and we have two authors, not three, so we can write them out. Remote Memory, Retrograde Amnesia, and Neuropsychology of Memory, Human Memory and Amnesia. This looks like a journal title. No, this is a book, I see. It's edited by someone, and this must be a chapter inside the book. But that's a little bit of a problem because something that's smaller inside a container needs to be inside those parentheses marks. So the correct way to write this would be opening parentheses, closing parentheses, even. That tells us that this is something smaller, a piece of a larger work. In this case, it's a chapter from a book. And this is edited by. So we write out the whole edited by. Year and age. Gelfan, Harold, and Robert A. Bjork. On the locus of retrieval inhibition in directed forgetting. So we have the quotation marks, that looks good. So this must be a chapter or a journal article. It's inside the meeting of psychonomic society. So this is not a journal, it's not a book, it's actually a meeting. So for a meeting, we need to a little, be a little bit more specific, like a conference or something like this. And you actually can find conference abstracts and sometimes some summaries of conference presentations inside Google Scholars and other databases. You also could go to a conference. Let's say you, you go to a conference and you just sit in and you listen to one of the presenters. Please, I encourage you, listen to the presenters at a conference. You can really learn a lot. It's very tiresome sometimes you go to a conference and nobody's sitting listening. It's a great opportunity to see work that's in development. If you went there and you listened, you said, hey, I heard something interesting. Would you ask that question? And you got very related to your research. How cool is that? That is really awesome. I love that. But how could you cite that? Well, one way you could cite that would be like this. So we have the authors, and then we have the title of the paper that was presented. And then we have the name of the present of the conference of the um, get together, whatever that is. 
And then we have the exact date. And we use the day, month, and year to lay that out. And then we have a location, Boston, Massachusetts. So in this way, we can allow the reader to narrow down the scope and find out where did this actually come from. Very helpful. Adler, Jerry, Kids Growing Up Scared, Newsweek, 1994, page 42 to 50. So this looks very straightforward, doesn't it? We have a very simple single author. We have the name of an article. We have the name of the journal. But in this case, this is not a journal. This is a magazine, M-A-G, magazine. So a magazine is a little bit different than a journal because a magazine usually comes out weekly. So the difference here is we need to add that date, a very specific date, the 2nd of January. So the day, the month, and the year because that's issued based on the day of the week. Okay, so I just want to emphasize MLA is a little bit my feeling. I could be wrong, but I feel MLA is a little bit more flexible in the way they do things. MLA is much more trying to give you a kind of guideline that is an overall look of things. It's not telling you specifically you have to do this or that. The idea is get your goal and the goal is to allow the reader to find the source of what you're citing. Therefore they're very good about saying you know let's make, a, make the, the source material and then let's go ahead and find the container material, right? That makes things very clear. That's, that's the simple graphic. There's more, right? How do we make more? We basically take this graphic and repeat it again, a little bit, a little bit shorter, just saying that this could be inside of another container, could be inside of another container. This could be a journal article, right? Inside of a journal, inside of a database, inside of something. So good luck with your references and good luck with your research.